Right, hi. Um, video today. I'm not here. I don't know what day you're getting this. But I'm going to London on Thursday because it's my daughter's birthday on Friday and I can't not see her on her birthday. I think I've spent every single birthday with her every year since she was born. Um, so it's a no-brainer. I've got to go and see my daughter. So I'm not here, but I thought I would just see. I took these to France. It says, not for sale, Paz Avondre. And these are wrapping cloths that I made for my aunt and for my mum. I've made them for myself, I've got them. Both my kids have got special ones that I made as part of my final degree show. Uh, my daughter has another one that I've made since then. But these are, the, I took some of my own and I, took, I couldn't get Helen's before I went. I didn't have time to get it from her. So I got the one from my auntie and the one from my mum. Now this one is my auntie's. Um, and I think I just really wanted to show you a bit of the surface. I do I did loads of hand embroidery. I like little things that I find on vintage pieces like that little label there. It's an old laundry mark, it's so precious. So I turned that back deliberately so that that would be visible. Um because that's like in my classes I talk a lot about evidence, evidence of the part that your hand plays in your work. And this is evidence of the previous life of this cloth, that particular piece of cloth. So I just loved it so much. Um, there's all kinds going on. There's cut work with things coming out. But what I wanted to show you about this one was I like to try and add maybe a little bit of a personal touch to it. Now my auntie is very close to me in age. My dad was like 21 years older than her. Um, so I think she was... Well, she, was, she wasn't a teenager when I was born, so she's more like a sister. And I come from a family that's male-dominated. I'm the only girl out of four. She's the only girl out of three. My mum's the only girl out of three. So the only auntie that I have by birth is this auntie. Um, and we're very, very close because of the closest in age. And we always say, I've got aunts by marriage, but she's my only true auntie. She's my only blood auntie. So I've got a little pocket here. And I had something made to go in that pocket for it. And it's this. You might have seen this before, but some of you are new to the blog, so you won't have done. And it's a tape that says, One and Only True Auntie. So she loves it. She absolutely loves that. That's like the the icing on the cake for her, that that is in this pocket. So that's what's in there. It's stitched in there so it can't get lost. Um, and I didn't actually take that out in France I didn't because I didn't want to have to try and explain it in French so I kept it hidden in the pocket and people had these drapes like domestic cloths um, and there was a bit of concern expressed about that at the time that people couldn't see them properly or oh, you need to pin those out more blah de blah and I appreciate that thought process or that way of thinking but it's not me and I didn't I think because even if it's draped like a domestic cloth you see that much of it so you're drawn in anyway to see that and I was perfectly willing uh, on numerous occasions to go forward and hold it out at the corner so people could get a closer look I didn't have a problem with that and I let <coughs> people take photographs too um, I didn't mind people taking photographs because I mean honestly I don't think anyone can exactly copy what you do ever because we all have our own way of working and if somebody tried to replicate that exactly it wouldn't look the same because the knots would be a different tension they'd put more padding or less padding in than I did you know what I mean so you can't exactly replicate anything I really don't believe you can um, you can get a sense that a piece is inspired by somebody else's work but in terms of exact replication it just doesn't work I don't think so and I like to just if I buy a vintage cloth that's got old ribbons on I like to leave them on let them live with it. I also like to, well I was looking at something, oh yeah here, just like add little bits of lace ruffles somewhere. I don't know where she keeps this. I don't think she keeps it in the dog basket but she's allowed that to get creased so I'll be having words with her when I see her. Um, so rule all loops enhancing that. So that's my auntie's cloth and her name's Margaret which actually is my mum's name too. So we're surrounded by Margaret's. So and this is my mum's cloth. Um, and there's something about my mum's cloth in a minute that I'll show you. And it's made in the same way, pieced together sections, vintage cloth, surface embroidery, prairie points scattered about. Um, I'm not sure 
I don't think there's any rule or loops on this one. Maybe I was having an off time with rule or loops. But there's more prairie points there. There's lace ruffle here. Mother's obviously taking better care of it than Auntie Margaret. Um, more padding, more cut work. Over here, my mum's got a pocket. Now, my mum's name is Margaret Elizabeth. So I cross-stitched her name on there. This lining that you can see is a handkerchief, silk handkerchief, that belonged to my great-great-grandmother. Um, and it was quite damaged. So I used it for the lining. So this pocket is lined with that. But in here is a silk handkerchief that belonged to my great-great-grandmother. So, and I keep that. Well, my mum keeps that in there. Um, she could do with iron in it, I'll have to tell her. And I took that out before I went to France because I didn't want that to get lost or misplaced. So that stayed at home while the pocket came to France, while the cloth came to France. Now, somebody wanted to buy this. They were begging to allow me to buy it. I don't know whether her name was Margaret, but obviously I said no. And I, then she came back and she was like, in a broken English, I was thinking, um, you know, perhaps I could buy that one and could you make it? I was just like, no, sorry. And I wouldn't sell it anyway because it has this piece of my family history in it. So no way, sorry, even a million pounds, I wouldn't part with it. And that is true, I would not part with it for a million pounds. And that's still got <coughs> not for sale, Paz of Andre. So that goes in there. So, yeah, so I just thought I'd share that with you, give a bit of a closer look. I know some of you will have seen this kind of thing a lot from me. But the difference today with this is um, that there are new readers to the blog, especially since I came back from France. My blog readers have gone up dramatically, actually, which is a really good thing. Um, so I know other people might like to see this um, and hear a little bit about the history of them and who they're for and, you know, just little special areas of them. Okay.